Why you should buy Battlefront 2 in 2023? Are you stupid? Why are you making this video 6 years late? Well, there's a couple of good reasons for this. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about Battlefront and why Battlefront 3 isn't happening and why no one's making a Star Wars multiplayer game. And it definitely has the Star Wars community really, really frustrated. This always peaks whenever new Star Wars content, such as Ahsoka in this case, releases, as we all see the lost potential if Battlefront 2 was alive, as I guarantee that we would have gotten an Ahsoka season containing a bunch of cool content if that was the case. Case. And most of you watching might already have this game and either still play it or played it before. But surprisingly, every time I talk about this topic, I get a lot of comments like this one asking, is the game worth buying? Is it dead? So I've thought it's still relevant to this day to talk about the state that Battlefront 2 is in. And I also wanted to talk about all the parts you actually get with the game that people might be forgetting. So at this very moment, you can actually get Battlefront 2 with its Celebration Edition. And the Celebration Edition basically includes every single skin they've released to the game for 10 euros on Steam. And I guarantee that's gonna be the best 10 euros you've spent if you enjoy Star Wars and shooter-like games. But even at its normal 40 euro price point, it's still definitely worth the money. But I'm guessing that it's on sale quite often and you can probably get it for like 10 to 20 dollars pretty much all year around now. So what state is the game in if we just start off by focusing on multiplayer? Well, the comment that I showed earlier was afraid that the game was dead due to the Steam charts being very low. And that's a first thing I want to tackle. When we're talking about PC, looking at Steam charts, it's usually a good indicator of how well the game is doing. For Battlefront 2, you can't do that because when Battlefront 2 released and for the first, I don't know, three or four years of its lifespan, it was not available on Steam. This means that the majority of players actually play on the EA app, like myself, which means it doesn't register on Steam. So all the players you see playing on Steam are people who bought the game after the support was officially cancelled, as that's when it arrived on Steam. So how is the state of the multiplayer. I'll be honest and say that some of the smaller modes, like if you want to play hero starfighters or really any starfighter modes, it's going to be quite tricky to find servers. But all of the large scale modes such as Galactic Assault, Supremacy, Heroes vs Villains or really any of those core modes, I pretty much always find a server instantly. And keep in mind that I'm talking about PC. We don't know exactly how the split is between console and PC. And the last time we knew that was actually for Battlefront 1, at which point PC was only 10% of the player base. So I'm pretty confident when I say that if I can find servers on PC, you will definitely be finding servers probably easier on the console. But that's something I want to ask you guys for a favor. If you're watching this video and you still play the game, please leave a comment below telling us what platform you play on, what part of the world, and how easy it is for you to find games, as you will definitely be helping out some people to decide if they want to buy the game or not. So what about the content? Well, after the launch, they added a lot of content. This included the supremacy mode, tons of heroes, blasters, maps, and things like that. So the game really ended in its best possible shape. But there are a few things that I think people still sleep on. As most people tend to ask, are the servers full? Can we get a full supremacy server? And, and yes, the answer to that is still yes. But there are modes like co-op a mode that I think a lot of people have underestimated. And, and personally, when it arrived, I thought, eh, I don't want to play against bots, that's no fun. And then I ended up playing that mode a lot, because it's so much more chill, it's not as try-hard. And if you just want to play with the heroes against normal troopers, and just feel like you're invincible pretty much, and get like 50 kills, it's really the perfect mode. You still play with three fellow players, but you face off against enemy AI, either defending or attacking parts of the map. And it's also great if you want to grind up your heroes and unlock new star cards and such, as that can be a little bit slower, especially with the heroes if you play multiplayer. As obviously, if you pick a hero in a multiplayer match, you are going to get targeted by everyone. And I'm usually happy if I get like five or 10 kills before I die but it also happens that you die instantly if you face off against some really good enemies. So co-op is something I highly suggest both to returning players if you just wanna re-experience the game and definitely to new players as well. But that's not all, the campaign is still something that people don't talk a lot about. I still think it's really good. If you have not played the game before, 
I would recommend checking it out. Sure, it's only like six to eight hours, so it's not the longest, but it's honestly a very nice campaign with the same type of gameplay as a multiplayer, as a shooter, but it also lets you play a bunch of the heroes and honestly have some of my favorite moments in Star Wars gaming, such as when you get to play as Luke Skywalker on Pilio. So even though it's not as good as playing like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, it's still included in the game. And if you decide to buy the game for the first time, definitely check out the campaign as it will show you a lot of cool environments and parts of Star Wars you might not have seen before. And it's pretty quick to get through as well. So does it get stale after a while? I mean, I have over a thousand hours in the game, so yes, obviously I don't play the game as often as I did three or four years ago, but I still find myself coming back to the game all the time. Whether I want to hop on some multiplayer games and see if my skills are still there and I can wreck some enemy players, or if I really just want to experience the core of the game in co-op again. And one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is one of the staples of the original games, which is instant action. That's also in the game, where you can set up a round completely offline without any enemy or friendly players and basically play supremacy on whatever map you want. If you want to use vehicles, heroes, troopers, that's all up to you. And as always, you can set the difficulty on the AI as well. You can't progress your star cards and levels and stuff in instant action since it's offline, but it's a fantastic way to experience a lot of the multiplayer parts in a more chill environment. But in my opinion, I kind of prefer to stick to either straight up multiplayer or the co-op if I want a more chill single player experience. So what if you want to play the modes that maybe aren't as easy to find groups for, like Ewok Hunt or Hero Starfighters? Well, there are some Discord groups and Reddit communities that have weekly game nights where they try to fill up a specific mode that might not normally be available. So honestly, I would say that like 95% of the game is still available, just that there are a few of the smaller modes that can be tricky to find a server to. I also want to add something here to the end that I've talked about in a lot of previous videos, but that only applies to PC, which is the vast modding community. If you decide to go down the route of trying mods, I can tell you you will have a basically Battlefront 2.5 or Battlefront 3, whatever you want to call it, as you will have not only cosmetic mods, but mods that adds pretty much every Star Wars character you would want. You'll see some of that in the background with carefully crafted abilities, characters, that really makes it feel like this is what the game could have been if they didn't stop supporting it three years ago. And you can even play online through the Kyber servers with these mods. The Kyber servers aren't super active, but it's the same thing there that they do have like weekly game nights where you can easily fill up a supremacy server and basically experience 20 versus 20 with full out modded characters. That's definitely been the most fun experience I've had with the game the last three years. But yeah, like I said, this is only available for PC. But if you do have a PC and you're pondering which platform you should get the game on, go for PC. I guarantee you, you will get way more content out of it. But that being said, all the stuff I've mentioned earlier in the video is of course available on console and is totally worth the price you currently have to pay. So in short, I would argue that Battlefront 2 is probably the best Star Wars gaming experience you can get right now, especially for that price point if we're talking about multiplayer action and even a bunch of single player action as well if you feel like you want more of that after playing something like Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I notice a lot of people who have watched this video now who have already played the game or still play the game actively. So if you have any questions at all and you haven't played the game before, leave a comment below. I'm sure there's a lot of us who wants to see you join the community and will gladly answer any questions you have. Thank you very much for watching and as always, may the force be with you.